This video talks about what you should include into your IYPT report. It is about the structure of slides that will help the audience get your point and hopefully will bring the score up for your team. Structure of slides. At the very first page of report is problem statement where you reveal the task to the audience with the keywords highlighted. They help you set the goal. And if you feel ready, Parameters can be identified here, or you can save it for later. Then come the usual presentation pages, beginning with an outline, followed by demonstration and explanation of phenomenon, the theory behind and to be tested, experiment, results, and conclusion. An outline tells the flow of the presentation. It gives the audience what to expect, the outline format varies from saying very little to extensive lists of things you want to say. However, try to keep it in one slide. For the phenomenon demonstration and explanation, use photos or videos and always check that the videos play. Here is where you describe your setup and equipment that you use. You can do some initial measurements and may want to show preliminary results in form of graphs to confirm that the phenomenon is really going on. After that, give some explanation why the phenomenon occurs and find the conditions under which it does. For theory, state physics principles or equations that you use bearing in mind the assumptions and limitations of the theory. If the theory is not so common, provide some background to the audience. If none of the existing theory satisfies you, make your own. After writing down the final equation, it is good to determine important factors that you are going to study. For experiments, describe your setup and show the results or graphs that you have. And for comparison between theory and experiment, you might think of bombarding the audience with a series of experiment 1, 2, 3, followed by the result 1, 2, and 3. However, by the time you get to result 3, the audience might have forgotten the detail of experiment 3. Keeping experiment and corresponding result together helps the audience digest your work. Conclusion To conclude, ask yourself the following questions. The first question is, what did you do? Think about task objectives and what you try to achieve. The second question is, how did you do it? Think about methods, tools, setup and the quantities that you measured. The last question is, what did you get? That includes values, graphs, comparison between theory and experiment. These questions for conclusion apply not only in oral presentation, but also in written report or publication. Conclusion may be divided into parts, but be concise. These are some tips for IYPT presentation. Like in any presentation or public speaking, knowing your target is important. So prepare your report with the audience in mind. You may want to consult the score sheet to get a better idea. There are usually many parameters involved in a single phenomenon and you studied quite a lot of them. However, do not squeeze everything you did in your slides. Because of time constraint, choose wisely what to report. Keep track of time. Nervous people tend to talk fast, or they get so excited and become speechless. You choose what you want to be. Lastly, it is often suggested that you predict the questions that might come up and prepare the answers. Q&A session. Questions from jurors. 
No scientific presentation is complete without an active Q&A session. Obviously, we ask questions when we don't understand something. We also ask questions even when we are not expecting any answer. Hmm. In IYPT, questions are from the opponent as well as from the jurors. Q&A session. First, do not force the audience or jurors in case of IYPT to ask questions. They will do, especially in IYPT, because the jurors are there to do their job. If the silence continues and no one seems to ask you anything, the chances are that your presentation is unquestionable. Your presentation is so clear that nothing you said raises a question. In this case, your presentation may not be bad, but it probably is not very useful either. Or, your presentation is unknowledgeable. Some things you said are just wrong, and the jurors are knowledgeable enough to know it. They could attack you, but in the process would embarrass you, so they remain quiet. For IYPT, the questions usually fall into three main categories. Theory. Questions are about model, assumptions, and limitation. People ask this kind of question to verify your physics knowledge. Measurement. Questions are about setup, tools, and their accuracy. The jurors might ask the question to justify the tool that you use. Results. This includes graphs and how the theory and experiment compare. Asking a good question is as difficult as having the right answer. Asking a question requires a certain amount of knowledge and courage. However, asking a good question will trigger people to remember the questioner. Here I summarize the types of questions you might encounter in IYPT and in any science presentation. The first type of question is to request detailed explanation for contents that the questioner does not understand or would like to hear further explanation. The question may go like, Could you tell me a bit more about? Would you please explain how you found? I did not catch the conclusion. Could you elaborate on that? The questioner might ask about the results of experiments with suspicion. That means your presentation is a bit doubtful. Here it goes like, when the phenomenon happens, how long will it last? Are there exceptions that do not follow the rule? Did you do the same experiment at different temperature range? People might ask about connection between your work and previous known facts or information. They go like, do you know? There might be some previous study on that. Radiation depends on surface area. How is this related to your results? Next type of question is to challenge the reporter's interpretation and conclusion. The questioner sounds like, You mentioned temperature had no effect. Could it be because? I'm wondering how you can be so sure of your model. Could you explain the reasons? To ask opinion about results when some unusual results were left uninterpreted. If your result shows an outlier, that's a good spot for people to ask. The question goes, for example, I noticed some outliers in your results. What does that mean? The graph shows more than one peak. What does that mean? To pose hypothetical questions, in IYPT, this is to ask about experiments that the reporter is unlikely to have tried. The question sounds like, If you could reverse the conditions, what would you predict the results to be? What do you think would happen if you did? 
What if? The next type of question is to suggest a new direction for the presenter. This might include advice and alternative hypotheses. The questions are, for example, Do you think it's possible that? Have you considered investigating? Here, to ask something not directly related to your main points. This is more of the questioner's curiosity. The questions are, for example, Well, this is just out of curiosity, but this is probably not your focus, but I'm interested in. You can prepare and practice presentation ahead of time. You can also prepare and practice answering questions. The response to the question is a direct reflection of the person's knowledge and attitude. Publications and presentation may include contributions from others. While answering questions, you are on your own. People will judge you by examining how you handle the questions. Here I give you some tips for answering questions. If you are not confident that you have fully understood the question, do not hesitate to confirm it before offering an answer. You can use the following expression. I'm afraid I did not catch what you are asking. And when you have some idea about what the questioner is asking, a better strategy is to rephrase the question in your own words and confirm it with the questioner. This is much more effective than having the questioner repeat the question in exactly the same way. You can try using something like this. You are asking about and then paraphrase. The questioner might have misunderstood something or failed to recognize some data from your presentation. It is quite likely that something about your explanation was difficult to understand or not well enough emphasized. Politely point out the misunderstanding and explain the necessary information. You can simply return to the slide and show the data again. Try an expression like one of the following. I'm sorry, I think my previous explanation was confusing. Let me explain that again. Let me show the data once again. They indicate that Presenting the conclusion first is an effective strategy in structuring a presentation. This is also true for your response to a question. Because you have to compose your answer on spot, you might end up giving a long response or the story shifts during the answer. To avoid such situation, provide a short direct answer at the beginning and then follow it up with a more detailed explanation. You may try something like, the answer is yes, because. Often questions cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. For example, when the data are not conclusive enough to indicate a yes or a no to a certain question. If the answer is not simply either yes or no, you can use I can't provide a simple answer, or, well, yes and no, and then you have to provide reasons why you say so. Although these expressions do not seem to contain a lot of useful information, the audience will learn that the situation is not simple and will be prepared to hear the complicated story that follows. When you don't know the answer, be honest and say you don't know. I don't know is not necessarily an embarrassing answer to a question. Many questions are made without expecting direct answer anyway. After indicating that you have understood the motivation behind the question, frankly tell that you don't have an answer. Oftentimes people are interested in how you deal with the question when you don't know the answer. However, don't miss a chance to introduce your comments or opinions. And if possible, explain the reason 
you are unable to answer. You can try something like, I wish I knew the answer, but a major obstacle to answering the question is, I don't know, but the most likely possibility in my mind is, I don't have data to support, but my opinion is. Many questions are intended to challenge the conclusion proposed by the presenter. The questioner might want to point out logical gaps or suggest alternative interpretations. Such questions might sound aggressive, but you must realize that the aggressiveness is not directed to you, but to the science that you are presenting. The questioner wants to know how concrete your result is. So, if you have additional information to support your claims, provide it. The following are the examples of expressions that can be used to introduce the supportive information. We actually did another test and it shows that this idea is also supported by data from. When discussing a hypothetical situation, make sure the audience realize that it is hypothetical. The audience might get confused whether the situation is hypothetical or real. Make the distinction clear. Try to give comments or opinions. You might say something like, One possible outcome is, If I change the mass of the ball, I would predict that 